Hey guys. Hey guys. <laughs> I just turned it on. Guys, it's Gail and Kelly. We're going, we're on a long road trip. The very beginning. We're in Seguin, Texas. We're gonna go look at the world's oldest, largest pecan. The uh, actual largest pecan, I think, is in Brunswick, Missouri. But it was maybe not always the world's largest pecan. We're pulling in my jeans, so we had to wait. We're to park because it's a small town and they only have like regular little parking spots everywhere. Over there, about two blocks away, that's where we parked Imogene because it's a big parking lot. Doesn't look designated to a business or anything. So that's where we chose to park her. It's kind of hard if you've got an RV, a big rig, because the city parking is just not that conducive to RVs. This is the corner of Austin and East Washington Street. So people many years ago, this riverbed down here had all the pecan trees and they <clears throat> had really good ones. So they decided to make that into something. So they made a 10 foot tall, five foot wide pecan right here. And it's been there for a long, long time. And then Missouri wanted to get in on the action. So they built one bigger, but no matter how big it is, it's only a knockoff replica. It's actually five feet long and two feet tall. And then a local that owns a pecan store put one on a trailer that was 10 feet long, five feet wide, so he could put it in parades. He would have made it bigger if he had known about the one in Brunswick. So that one's still not quite as tall, but the story he's selling is correct. And I want to we're gonna try to go buy the one that's on the trailer see if it's there for us to take a picture of so yeah this one's small gopro makes everything smaller on this wide angle y'all but you tell us <laughs> is this worth it let's see kelly i don't know about this kind of a let down because it's just a little bigger than a football <laughs> a little bit bigger there it is, than a texas football pecan original the game home of the world's largest pecan at some point but they do have a real nice little veterans memorial that's that's nice that they're yeah. doing that little water feature in front of it yeah this i assume is the courthouse the city hall anyway it's kind of a cool old town Something to see, a lot of walking around, little shops. The burnt bean barbecue over there. I don't know if that's any good or not, but it's still in business, so there you go. So that's City Hall. We were on the other side of that with the baton. There's a gazebo, hooligan water fountain. The plaque said the water fountain was scheduled for demo in the 90s. And some judge allocated money for it, I suppose, to get his name on it, give himself a little fame. <laughs> but there it is, it's still it's restored and we're going. Pretty cool. City Square Town Square. Yeah, there's even money in it. <laughs> there's a statue over there. I guess we'll see who's on that. I mean it's not fancy looking. But sure is refreshing looking. They even have parking lines inside of it. And so you know where to park. That's where they hit the electric. Oh. And the water pipe. I gotcha. There's, I figure there's some logic. We'll see who's on the horse. This guy right here. He's looking at us, man. Juan. Nepo. Muesino, ne Nepo Muequeno, Seguin, calls to arm campaign for free Texas, Texas shall be free. Now these are the different years and dates of certain events. events. <laughs> he said he fought along the side of Jim Bowie in the Battle of Conception. He led the cavalry unit during 
the decisive San Jacinto victory. He was a senator, mayor of oh. San Antonio. He's the fellow they sent from the Alamo to go get help. Oh, he is? That's what it says. Oh. 18 and 36. Wow. Impressive. Oh, it's better. That's a skyscraper. <laughs> Old churches and stuff. There's a lot of history in this town. You know. Yeah, it's pretty. I think it's a, a good small town to go sightsee in just to putz around during the day. The area around Seguin, the land and all that's really pretty too. A yeah. Lot of cattle land. We're recording this on a Monday, so it's during the week. Okay, back to Imogene to go find the one that's on the trailer. The pecan, that is. This is Pape Orchard and Farm Equipment. Pape is the name of some, the last name of the person that made this one for the parade or parades. Again, no place to really park, so we parked right there. And maybe we can go see the beautiful blue bonnet field. That's the world's largest milk traffic collection, too. What? In their opinion. <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. This is like literally a mile or so, two miles from the one we just saw. Well, those are the pecan they use in the parade. Made of fiberglass and steel. Fiberglass and steel. That, that's the 10 foot tall, five feet wide. Oh, well, yeah. The one I was speaking of earlier. I was sadly disappointed while ago. <laughs> well, he heard my instructions, but it was, I was talking about this one, so. It's the Mars and Venus thing. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, y'all. We're gonna cross over to the blue bonnet field. This is in March, and in March, the springtime is when you'll see all the blue bonnets. That's a Texas flower. They bloom. It's actually illegal to pick these or mow over them because they're protected, sort of. All the butterflies. They're so pretty. So we're gonna go where they they're- They smell good too, you can smell them. Yeah, so here, see what they look like up close. So we'll go over there where you can see more. How beautiful is that? This is in Seguin, y'all. You can't say you don't smell that. A little hint of honeysuckle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honeysuckle jasmine type smell. Look here, y'all. Indian paint brushes. So neat. These are also things that you see bloom on the uh, side of the road with blue bonnets this time of year. Pretty. So we made it to San Antonio. This is what I did to prevent the cat, DC, from getting behind the RV. My mother helped me make this pillowcase. Another YouTuber watched our video and suggested that I do a pillowcase and I shoved it down in there. Can't really see it that well. And then I put a pillow on each side to close the gap. And then I also had a pillow shoved down here, which was this one. And then on this side, I just, it was more narrow, so I shoved the towel there. Well, when we were outside, I could hear some thumping around, because the first thing she tried to do was get up here. You can see evidence that she does that. And this was pushed down, and there was a hole in here, so she managed to get in there. So what we've done is, now she can't get out, <laughs> but I've left this open. So if she wants to come through there, she should be able to fit fine. She's come in and out there before. There's two things we're trying to prevent. One, her clawing the couch to get out. The other is her not coming out when we're trying to leave 
so we'll see if that works we brought green olives because they're attracted to that we have some tuna i'm going to pick up the water someone suggested that in another video the food and water um, don't let it sit out at night because she comes out at night we'll see if that works so anyway i bought her favorite brought her favorite bed she doesn't want it so yeah this is a, <laughs> a two and a half month trip so we brought our ice maker this is a new addition instead of constantly buying ice for our drinks but we brought a lot more cat food so that container is big um, i switched the litter because i've been struggling with some litter from um tiny cat like the clumping so i went to the pine and that's working great i need to move that but yeah it's kind of a mess right now it really is these totes get to go out and we've got to clean up the bed area but we brought our closets are crammed full of clothes because we're going to be dealing with winter and summer on this trip so anyway i also brought my arrow garden because i want to grow my vegetables and there's my basil it's growing crazy good i was gonna leave it at home and see if my daughter-in-law would deal with it she said she would but i just want something to grow so i had to empty it to get it here and refill it. it's a hassle and we're gonna do this i don't know seven or eight times over the course of our trip so hopefully i'll either be glad i did it or hate that i took it so one or the other and i fell um see if you could see this i don't know if you can tell but where that sewer hose is there's about it goes down maybe a foot from the ground so when i was i was walking this way on the walkie talkie telling kelly you know i was kind of getting out of the way of the rv and asking him to you know screwed over and i the guy from the park was standing right there and i just walked right in that hole in my ankle twist and it's not the one i had surgery on thank god and it feels off but i can walk on it so what a blessing day one of vacation that would suck about it sucking stay tuned to see what happens we're here in san antonio we're at the world's largest boot cowboy boots cowboy boot look like a tony llama Woo ostrich skin oh, yeah that's we're gonna check it out it's on the side of the freeway in the middle of nowhere right off of 410 so so we're it's gonna like a drive-by type thing it's really no parking no it's not set up for people to come hang out so we have to hit and run right here yeah there's a parking lot right there where i think some people have gone to park pretty cool though Well, folks, that's the end of our video. I broke my ankle on the first day of our trip, so we're packing up and we're heading home. So, this is it. Probably won't be any content for a little while, but thanks for watching.